by the grace of God, we will be reading from the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel the prophet, chapter uh, 28. The book of Ezekiel the prophet, uh, chapter 28, and verse 1. This is a live translation from the church in Kifisia, Athens, Greece. Old Testament, the book of Ezekiel the prophet, chapter 28 and verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, say to the ruler of Tyre, and this is what the sovereign Lord says. In the pride of your heart you say, I am a God. I sit on the throne of a God in the heart of the seas. But you are a man, not God, though you think you are as wise as a God. Are you wiser than Daniel? Is no secret hidden from you? By your wisdom and understanding you have gained wealth for yourself and amassed gold and silver in your treasuries. But your great skill in trading, you have increased your wealth. And because of your wealth, your heart has grown proud. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you think you are wise, as wise as a God, I am going to bring foreigners against you. The most ruthless of nations, they will draw their swords against you, against your beauty and wisdom, and peace your shining splendor. They will bring you down to the pit, and you will die a violent death in the heart of the seas. You will then say, I am a God in the presence of those who kill you. You will be but a man, not a God, in the hands of those who slay you. You will die the death of the uncircumcised at the hands of foreigners. I have spoken, declares the sovereign Lord, I mean. The king of Tyre is indeed a unique and special kind of man. His name was Hiram. Tyre was the a city in Phoenix. In Phoenix, in Phoenicia, rather, and it was one of the greatest ports in the area. And that port was not only one of the greatest ones in the surrounding nations, but they also had the cedar trees of Lebanon and all the kinds of trees that were growing in the area and they were using as a merchandise. Hiram was a unique person and God used him sp with splendor. Firstly, so that he may be able to build up the palaces and help out Solomon with the temple of, uh, to God. He was a great friend with Solomon. David couldn't build a house for the Lord because he didn't have the laborers or the understanding and wisdom to build up temples. He was uh, someone who was always uh, fighting. And he didn't have the materials as well. He didn't have the craftsmen, but he also didn't have the wisdom and understanding to build up the temple. The wisdom that is of the Spirit of God and the illumination of God for us in the New Testament uh, as we may see it. But he also didn't have the materials to go through with such a construction. But because all good deeds is coming down from the Father of Lights the certain thing is that God foreseen Hiram as 
a helper, not just a helper though. He wasn't a helper of David, but he was much more than that. He was a doer of the work of God in the kingdom of David. But that was not the end of his work. When God, as David, wanted to build a temple for him in the name of God Almighty, and God said to him, not you, but your son, your beloved one, Solomon, and his name means peaceful because the, he won't be a man of war, but he will be a man of peace. And as a Zedekiah, that means beloved. And he who built the temple up, and Solomon was not able to do it by himself. He didn't have the knowledge or understanding to do so. And when he was 18 years of age, God visited Solomon. And Solomon said, I'm just a child. I do not know what I'm supposed to do. That is why, Lord, please give me wisdom and understanding so that I may be able to do according to your work. Build your temple that you have entrusted me with. But he never paid attention to the words of David. Of course, you're supposed to ask for wisdom and understanding from God, but for you to do always according to the word of God. And no matter what we ask for, this is what God is giving us. If, of course, we are the people of God. If, in other words, we truly have been selected by God, but at the same hand, at the same time, we have selected God as well in our lives. In other words, God is selecting us. He loved you with eternal love. He drew you near with mercy. He brought you to His church. He added you to it. And now I'm opening up your heart so that you may pay attention to my word. And I'm also opening up your heart so that you may be able to understand what my word is. And therefore, God is making His work perfect in the hands, in the life of a Christian. But the question remains, do you want it? Because the Word of God says that anyone who wants, if anyone wants to come behind me, there are things that he needs to do. Firstly, he needs to deny his own self. You are not supposed to do as you please or as you like or as you desire, but you are supposed to deny yourself as Jesus Christ is going to set you free from all things so that you may be able to do as you please and as, you, as God wants. And truly, God blessed Solomon and he gave him understanding and wisdom indeed so that he may be able to do according to the desire of God and desire of Solomon and David and that is to build up a temple for God. He didn't ask to remain obedient to the word of God. Solomon didn't ask for it. That is why he was drawn away right after he built the temple. He lost the blessing of God in his life. The utterly blessed, the most blessed person in the Old Testament, he lost the blessing of God. And through fire, at the end, he was able to be saved. Because at the last moment, according to his own confirmation, that is confirmed in uh, the book of Ecclesiastes, that is the testif that is Solomon testifying. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. He says in Ecclesiastes, he was uh, he became a king, 18 years of age, but he then lost his way. He says now in Ecclesiastes, last chapter, verse 13, and after he went all through these sins, he had got he got married to a thousand. Women, 300 concubines, 700 women. And that's the least of all the issues. He built up different temples for different gods. He bowed down and worshipped other gods. The blessed person of God now did all these things. Amazing, isn't it? And just bef before he departed, he confirmed 
Now all has been heard, here is the conclusion of the matter, my life that is. For this is the whole duty of man, for God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. And we understand now through these things that it is not for the man to have a good life full of possessions and gold and silver, but it is the duty of man to serve God because God will bring every deed into judgment, whether that is hidden, bad, good or evil. It says in the last chapter, verse 13 and 14, because we will all sit in front of the beamer seat of God and we will all be judged by God. And now God has blessed him and Solomon built up the temple of God, was able to build it. But with the help of Hiram, that unique person that we are just reading about now, a unique person in wisdom, understanding, knowledge, ability, and power. Wealth, gold, silver, many trees, different trees from the forests of Lebanon. He had, in other words, all things, so that he might be able to build the temple of God according always to the commandment of God, the blueprints and the commandments that gave to David. And he uh, then on Pastor Solomon. All of the temple of God was fully described by God. Solomon couldn't do it by himself. And he had nothing in his hands to build the temple with. He didn't have the craftsmen or the materials, wisdom or understanding to build the temple up. But God gave him uh, through Hiram, Hiram all the things that he needed because he was a worker of God someone who truly worked with faithfulness into the word of God and he had great love for God without Hiram rather love to Solomon rather not God but without the help of Hiram Solomon couldn't have built the temple but years went by and now God comes along with the prophet Ezekiel. And he now speaks to Hiram. Things that are not nice. And all the things that were written in the Old Testament were written for us. So that we may be edified through them. So that we may be built up. Is it possible for such a talented, unique person, able, with glory to have anything less than a beautiful ending have a tragic end what was the mistake that the king of time made what was the reason and that is the important thing how and why was that person has that person fallen away and now God confirms how the perfect person fallen Firstly, he was proud. He was wise. Are you wiser than Daniel? He says, Is no secret hidden from you? Says the word of God in verse 3. And, but he says then, By your wisdom and understanding, you have gained wealth for yourself. You were able to amass gold and silver in your treasuries because of your wisdom and understanding. By your great skill in trading, you have increased your wealth. And because of your wealth, your heart has grown proud. What is the reason? And that is the message for us today. Why? And now the Word of God explains. The prophetic Word of God explains. To the king of Tyre, but also to you today. Why? Because your heart has grown proud. Because you said to yourself, because you think you are wise as God. Rather, it says in verse 2, in the pride of your heart you say, I'm a God. I sit on the throne of a God and in the heart of the seas. Because they had the greatest port in the, in the area. And you... 
but you are a man and not a god. So you think you are as wise as a god. There's a person that is starting against, standing against the word of God, and there's the person that is doing accordingly to the word of God. But there's also the person and the man who made his heart. He thinks he's as wise as a god. And the person that is according to the heart of God, he's doing is a person that is doing exactly according to the uh, word of God. But the man who thinks that he's as wise as a god, he thinks that whatever he wants and desires, he's able to do and have. Only God has that ability. Only God has that power. That is a detail, of course. But a, a tremendous difference. Whatever I want, I have the wisdom, understanding, material, sources, and I will do it. I have the talent, I have the abilities. I am able to do it. But we know very well that the man is not able to do as he pleases unless God is with him. Unless, if God is with you, then you will be able to do as you want, according always to the Word of God. There is a difference, therefore, what is the, the, the heart of God, and there's a difference between as wise as God, equaling yourself with God. And he didn't work a couple of years with wisdom, but he was w moving in with wisdom. He was doing things with talent and understanding throughout his life. Throughout all his life, he was able to do things that were beneficial to the Word of God. As he helped out David, but, but more than that, his son Solomon. No one else was able to do the things that the king of Tyre did. He was able to indeed do as he pleased. But as long as God allowed it, and as long as God has give, was giving him the ability to do it, there's a great difference, and it is very important for us to know that all good deeds and everything that is good in your life is coming down from the Father of Lights. You are not able to do anything, no matter how smart, able, talented, or wealthy you are. You can place in that empty spot anything you have. Even if you are wiser than Daniel, you still cannot do anything unless God provides. And when is God blessing the person? And when God, when is God drawn away from a person? The answer is when the person has a heart as wise as a God. I am able. He thinks rather. But when the person understands that he needs to be have a heart that is obedient to God, then indeed God can work with them. And he's now able to do all things through God. Though. It is very important, my dear brethren, for us to understand that small detail. For us to know, for you to know, that you are not able. No matter what your talents are, no matter how able you are, no matter how easy it seems, or the power that you have, you are not able to do anything that is good unless God provides it, unless God helps you out. And that is a spiritual law. And these spiritual laws cannot be shaken. People are trying with their own abilities, with their own wisdom, with their own understanding and uh, abilities, sometimes through the good looks even, and the maleficency they have in their hearts. But the characteristic example of the creation of God that was perfect in wisdom and understanding, but His end will be eternal life, was the cherub above all other uh, angels, Satan himself, Lucifer. Now the question remains, who do you want to look like? 
see now the result for the person that worked truly a work of God a unique work of God because through him with his own help the temple of God was built and he was also able to build the palace of David as well let me say this in another way he was able to build the temple of the living God the house of the living God and he was also able to build the church of Christ he had the ability he had the the talent the craftsman the materials a unique person wasn't he but he will he is now coming down to eternal damnation eternal damnation falling bring it brought down to the pit isn't that terrifying brothers and sisters for you to work in th throughout your life for you to have good fruit results that are nice and remaining for the glory and benefit of God and all of a sudden your heart to say this words I am the one let me give you a nice example so that we may understand the the critic how critical the situation is Lord Lord open up to us and Jesus Christ said go depart because I never came to know you depart from me the ones who are working in iniquity but Lord what are you talking about because we prophesied in your name we casted out demons in your name and you are now calling us uh, workers of iniquity throughout our lives we've worked for you what are you talking about Lord look at the fruit that I'm having and the Lord said you don't have anything I have this is not yours it's mine the ability that you have now Hiram the power and the knowledge and the ability you have is not yours it's mine I've given it to you so that you may be able to do according to my word but is it possible for me to be able to act according to your word and my end because for, for to be eternal damnation yes because you have made you think you are as wise as a God and because of that I will bring foreigners against you the most ruthless of nations says in verse 7 and who are these the foreigners that will come up against you the most ruthless of nations even if throughout your life you uh, struggled for the work of God and with success a tremendous message isn't it I've never understood I could dare say a, a tremendous message isn't it because I said that when you have fruition you are you doing good when you have a good fruit you are safe but now God comes along and says you have George now you have more fruition and good deeds than Hiram the answer is no I don't but I'm gonna bring him down to the pit and who are the most ruthless of nations in our days Antichrist and the false prophet this is the answer for us can you now comprehend what God is telling us that your soul is always in danger pay attention do not say blessed be the name of God I'm doing good but instead let us always say like Apostle Paul maybe I will be able to end up to the resurrection of the dead maybe but are you in danger Paul yes why because the heart of man is maleficent and evil and boastful 
wants different and peculiar things. The heart is happy when the glory of God comes in your life and thinks of it as its own. Now he talks to the king of Tyre, the greatest of all nations, and he says that I will bring the most ruthless of nations against you and they will draw the swords against you, oh, beauty and wisdom, and they will pierce you your shining splendor and they will bring you down to the pit and you will die a violent death in the heart of the seas. And even then, in, front, in the presence of those who kill you, I'm a God, you will say this, even though you're but a man, not a God. But I have a heart equal to God, as wise as God. No, you will die a death of the uncircumcised at the hands of foreigners. And this word now is being spoken to us for the doctrine of all of us individually and first of all to me and to you. A personal message indeed. Tremendous, isn't it? It is very beautiful, very safe. What Joseph used to say in Daniel and the people of God, Paul even, not me, but the Lord. I am the least of all the, the saints. Apostle Paul used to say these words. I am the least of all the saints of God. Of all the people, of all the brethren. The least, yes. I'm less than zero. And that protect us. And now the critical question. I was asked uh, that question by God. Are you the least of all the signs? And I couldn't reply. And something else that we will see during the end. And it was a question of mine years from years now, for years now, and I couldn't reply. I couldn't answer the question. Brothers and sisters, just like if God is pleading with us today. Do not think of yourself as being great, no matter how, no matter how God is blessing you, no matter what great, no matter how the work rather you have for God. Do not think that I, with absolute certainty, when the trumpet will sound, I will be ready to meet. Christ in the air. Do not imagine this. Do not think that this will be the case. How much more if you see yourself in the mirror that is the Word of God and you see all the issues that you have. Because we are faulty in many things in every one of us. But excuse me for saying this. Have you ever heard me prophesy? You? Have you ever heard me preaching? Did you do it? Have you ever heard such sermons like mine? Did you do them? Is that your talent? Have you ever seen me praying and demons are casted out? Did you do that? Never say I did this. Let us never have that word ever approach God. Not me but God. When you say I will, fall, will, will be right before your mistakes. I've made mistakes, Lord. Rectify them, please. I am a sinner, Lord. Please help me out. Please, Lord, show mercy in my life. This is the, the I that you should be uttering. And the last petition. Please, Lord, Give us a heart that is according to the heart of God so that we want, we want to do according to your work, according to your commandments. Not because we can, because we're not able to, but because you can and we can. Confirming it, I mean.